What's going on, guys? So this is a small MG box. This is a GNX. How dare you call it a Jinx? And this is the last Master Grade Monday of Double October. Let's get to it. So this Master Grade Monday, we are finally looking at the MG. <sighs> they did it to me again. Why? Why? You can't even tell what it is. Anyways, you got a big gray mobile suit right here, and another one there, and another one there, and another one there. Is there? I don't know why I did that. And of course, the uh, old school MG logo there. I say old school, it hasn't changed that much. But I gotta wonder if it has. Hmm, might be something worth looking into. Anyways, you got the red Bandai logo way down there. And you got cool red particle effects because technically speaking, these aren't exactly Jiantao drives. They're closer to the fake drives that the, uh, that the uh, Trinity uses. And I'm not saying it's exactly the same. I'm saying they're closer to the proper, much better less harmful G, uh, G and Tau drives didn't come till later. Okay, we got Bandai 2010 right there. So yeah, we got some cool glowing purple stuff, explosions and things. Um, can't quite tell what blew up over here. Probably uh, some non-Federation mobile suits, something like that. So this was like the first mobile suit that the Federation actually created on their own once they received like that buttload of fake GN drives from the uh corner was it the corner foundation or whatever so the mysterious behind the scenes uh people who were manipulating everything that weren't exactly celestial being okay so moving on okay so we got in the frame and then uh the things in japanese that i can't read because it's in japanese and i'm not and you can actually see the different bits and stuff like that that's actually kind of cool you got head Yes, yes it is. Body, yep, and it has arrows, so it can go yang yang yang. Leg, yeah, that that's a leg. I don't know what you're telling me about it, but it's a leg. I think that's a foot, not not a leg. You got front view, yes. Hey, look, it's a GNX. It's a ESF GN Drive T. Yeah, okay. How? It wasn't exactly. I'm just. I'm. Make, I don't. Nope. Just. Just stop. Uh, equipped mobile suit GNX 603T. <sighs> Image from when they first really kind of showed up. All kinds of things right here you can't read. And then cockpit block. They didn't really think about that name very much, did they? Yep. Okay, figures. And does come with a uh, Soma Pietis or a... Um, is it Andre Smirnoff? Or is it... I can't tell. I can't tell which smear. Uh, could be the other one. Either way, you got rear view there. And then you've got, hey, the GN. Hey, hey, spoilers. Spoilers. But yeah, there's the like nesting of all the GN drives they got all together. Display base. So if you felt like doing that thing, you can do that. Looks like a bunch of like, like a cookie or cupcakes with a little whip. You know what I'm saying. Okay, and we come over here and look, they made it legible. I get it. It's a design choice. But why bother putting the name on the front if you're going to cover up 90% of it? Just give us the box art. And then put the name on every other side. It's fine. Gundam 00, GNX, all the things. 603T, because that's the model number they went with. <clears throat> action pose. Yep, it can definitely action pose. And you got the GN Claw. Just a hand. Pointy fingers. I guess if you want to call that a claw, you can't. Rear armor! Shoulders can do thingies. Shield can do thingies. Knee armor can do thing. Stop it. Stop. You're, you're giving things away. Binder. It's just a crutch thing. I do like to show a bunch of them. That's pretty cool. Beam rifle. Long or short. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If you want to do it that way. And then here's the picture of 
the finished kit with everything in the box and all the runners in the sticker sheets. And you got special markings. So if you feel like putting on special markings of different types, you can do that. I did not because I actually like it with a clean look. And got a warning right there. The three-year-old should probably not join the Federation because they're too young to pilot. It doesn't actually say all that right there. I think it literally just tells you to build carefully and don't tell me how to live my life. And then you've got PSPE, ABS, that'll get out the toilet. And then you've got 3,600 yen. I think I paid around about that. It's probably a, a hair more. Not, not extravagant, but you know, a little bit more. I'm just happy I got this. And then illustrated by Morishita Naochika, one of my fatest, fatest? <laughs> it's early in the morning, guys. Uh, one of my favorite artists, period. Which is why I like the box art, but can't stand that they cover the thing. So, that's it, guys. And, unlike last time, I remembered that there's a build montage for this. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot there was a build montage and didn't mention it. So it snuck up on you. This time, no secret build montage. Let's go! Right now that the build montage is done do you guys enjoy those i remember you guys really enjoying those so i'm gonna click the button and we're gonna do turntable time real quick all right guys so this is my first mg gnx or jinx as i will refer to it and sorry if that bothers you not really but uh i have not actually built this but if you guys remember from a little while ago i did do jinx week in one of the previous double Octobers where I built 
almost every conceivable <laughs> version of it in HG. Um, clearly not all of them, as we'll probably see very soon. Um, and then, well, you know, I've really enjoyed that kit, and I never got my hands on the MG. And I really wanted to get a hold of the ALOS version, but it was sold out by the time I got around to it. So if it's possible that I can get my hands on that later, I probably will, along with the Federation version of the Jinx 3. I think they're both really cool. We did look at the Advanced Jinx uh, previously. I do wish that they would stop doing them all P-Bandai. This is the only one that's non-P-Bandai. And to me, that is super annoying. Because it is a really fun kit. Now, the MG has its problems, and we'll go over that. And uh, I think in some ways, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to state this. The HG is a little bit, a little, little, little bit superior to the MG. And I'll tell you why. But for now, let's take a closer look. Okay, guys, so right up front here, we literally have the head. And one thing that's neat about it, he does have the four eye stickers. What's kind of interesting, it seems like a lot of the times they're flying forward. So these two eyes down here are like doing most of the looking. That's what it actually kind of looked like on the box. Like they're flying like this. But that means these two eyes are sort of looking forward. So maybe the whole point of the crisscross eyes is so they can keep the head looking down. But they can continue to see forward. And then they can also... Change it up like this, and now they're looking forward this way, but extra sensory. I don't know. I never understood why it has four eyes. But it does have a big old camera sticker. Not sticker, but camera right there. There is a purple sticker back in there. I believe it's a couple. I think it's one around the edge and then one on the top, which is pretty cool. It's got little bitty Vulcans right there. And then one thing that's neat about how the head works. It's going to be a little hard to see. But the back of the head, there's a whole lot going on here. Uh, has a flap. That's a loud truck. There's a big old flap right there. And as you extend the neck, the flap too extends. So he actually has a really great range of motion. So we can look up like that. And you can really pull the head forward and down like that. Which is cool. Though turning it is a little awkward. It's actually on a longer thing. Like it's it's like... The actual ball joint is back here, and then it mounts to the neck up here, so it kind of comes up and forward, which is neat. Gives it some interesting ability. Now, let's talk about these chest uh, thrusters, maneuvering things, the top X parts here. So they're on a little hinge right there, and then there's ever so, at least there should have been, like a tiny little nub there. Oh, I'm thinking of the HG. Uh, and it sort of rests like that. And then they can turn... Upward like that or kick it back just a little bit more so they can get a little bit more back there I, To me, it's almost a little too much movement. I don't know if these also serve a similar function to say like the uh, GN antennas that the Gundams have they have a little bit of That going on or they're just purely thrusters. I mean they do have what appears to be particle release dealies there Vernier perhaps and then back behind there, you can see the purple part of the main GN driver. And um, unfortunately, I don't have any of the purple lights. That would be awesome if I did. If I do, down the line, we will take a look at that. Because um, this thing would look super great um, lit up. Okay, so you've got the chest armor, or shoulder armor, sort of. It's got very wide shoulders there. These do move. I can't <laughs> too much in a way these move a little bit back and forth and when you're constructing it It's gonna seem super loose, but it gives it a butterfly Movement, which is cool. And then you actually get up and down So the inner shoulder this part is what's moving this way and then the outer shoulder Is what's moving here. So it's got some really cool range of motion and I do digs it. You gotta be careful because the more you work something, the more it's probably gonna get loose. And you do get a bicep rotation. Big old double jointed elbow right there. Looks good. And the one benefit that the MG does have, all these little gray spots here, whatever they might be, maybe these are their form of GN condensers, um, which would actually make sense as to why they are where they are, because they're just trying to copy a Gundam. Um, 
those you all have to paint or use stickers on here they are actually molded separate plastic pieces which is cool and you come down to the gn claw which is just the freaking hand it's a ball joint with a hinge and then this little ringlet here is loose on its own individual or individual articulated thumb and first finger and then the bottom three are together it does use the kind of slot style or well peg i guess for lack of a better term and they work fine but they do have the double finger situation happening that we pointed out on the gn or the uh advanced jinx a couple years ago so it can claw i can claw you while i'm while i'm doing the thing uh they're a little bit weird they're they're fine but they're a little bit weird okay and uh, sorry if i'm uh, sniffing you know the weather's changing a lot right now okay so you do get ab crunch which is fine it's a little weird but it's there and if you guys are noticing there's no gn drive back here because i wanted to show you how it works it's actually pretty neat okay and you can rotate at the waist just be careful because there's a lot going on and we come down to the crotch okay so let's just point it out this is the cockpit it's not in the head it's not in the chest it's not even here in the torso it's in the this crotch pod what what did the box call it that was incredibly unfortunate um oh cockpit block so this is the cock block anyways so if you lean this forward well for one that happens because this is the dumbest thing that they decided to do and you come over here you can pop that up and look there's your little pilot right there um i don't actually know which one that is and there is a scaling issue between the pilots so the standing pilots are like this big and the sitting pilots are that big it's really dumb i didn't paint any of them i apologize i also don't care so it's pretty cool but it's also super dumb and I don't know if this allowed them to have, like, a tiny bit of, like, escapability that some of the later things had, um, or what. Uh, it does seem strange to have the cockpit for the pilot right up front in the main torso area, you know. So if something that some of the later suits did better because they had the escape pod G and drive thing on the back, which was rarely hit. Whereas the rest of the suit could be blown up and they could just go, woof. If this had that ability where it could just detach and then fly away, fine. But let's talk about this. So you do have a hinge here on the binder. And then these are just mounted to little bitty ball joints. And frankly, it's not great. These keep falling off and, or they get loose. They get to an angle and then you just go, and then they fall off. And I mean specifically like these little GN binder thruster things that make the X. Those keep falling off. They look cool, but they just keep falling off. So just keep an eye out for that. Also, I'm not really that keen on that hinging there. Okay, so the hips are what they are. If you get the arms out of the way, you could probably kick out pretty good to the side. But kicking forward, eh, there's kind of a lot going on. So forward is not really the direction it wants to kick come to back uh the whole rear thruster assembly here does move along with these skirts then you can also open that up to get to more high speed thruster and then there i'll just knock that off that is legit how easy that is to come off you do have thigh rotation there and if you bend at the knee you can bring it back that far and i think that might only be engaging just the bottom knee huh and there i revealed one of the secrets the hidden beam sabers in the top of the knee that's pretty cool we'll look at that more let me look at weapons by the way this knee is super super stiff and so there's a little peg right there and i gotta wonder what this so if there what if anything is supposed to be pegged in there almost looks like another spot for a uh uh, beam saber, which is kind of funny. Just hidden beam sabers all over the legs. I do actually like that aspect of it being hidden in there, but I'm pretty sure I didn't utilize both knees there and actually got pretty good bend out of it. So that's good. 
come down to the foot basic ball joint there and you get the armors that can move with it you get the flappy flap here flappy flap back here toes that point infinitely which is going to cause it to fall over and has very much like the Xia. and then if you want like high speed foot mode you can squeeze down much like the curios can so it can fly forward at decent speeds presumably that's why it does that generally speaking if there's a big old thruster in the foot and the foot collapses i usually take that as high speed mode go that way quickly mode See, I keep trying to fight it like this isn't how the knee is supposed to be. It does have a little bit of, like, digigratedness to it. Like, to a degree, like, just the way it's shaped. It doesn't function that way. It's just the way it's kind of chicken leg, like, forward and then back. But I do digs it. I do digs it a lot. It just does have some problems here. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk features and stuff. So, let's come down here. And we got the GN Drivo. Come down to its level. So, it does come with this big old nut thing. Now, as we saw, these kind of can interact with each other if you have a bunch of them, which is kind of cool. I was wondering why it was like that. And it doesn't really hold it. It just kind of cradles in there which is a neat way to do that because generally speaking the gundams or at least xe and stuff do come with like the carrier thing and you see here it's a gn drive like normal you got the purple dome up front which comes to the back and it's the new version of the cone along with you know a kind of purplish section there and unlike a normal gn drive this thing has a tiny bit of transformation you see these little round bits here are sticking out straight But when you come to the back, back here, you see you got to pull down on this little guy. And then I don't believe there's any specific orientation. Oh, wait, no, there is. What is it, though? Okay, so just line this guy up. And so that's inserted, but then you, and now it's locked in place, kind of. And then you use that to lock it the rest of the way. So there's our nice little, like, for some reason it reminds me of an insect. Like, it just reminds me of, like, a, a butt, like the thorax, or a, uh, yeah, a thorax of a, uh, like, stinging creature of some sort. <sighs> God, these things are annoying. Stand with your feet together like you know you did something wrong. Okay, so more stuff to look at. And we have the long barrel... Well, this is just the barrel because the rest of the gun isn't here. All right, so you do have a reflection of a thing that's causing the camera to freak out. Okay, so it is actually molded in nicely different colors here. So even like barrel down there, or drum, I guess I should say, is a separate piece. It looks cool. And then you can remove this for whatever reason. I don't know why it was showing this. So you can remove that. I don't know why it was showing it as a separate thingy. So you can see all the details on the inside. If one were so inclined, painting that would give some pretty cool detail work. But to use that, you need the actual little gun. A small, short rifle. Not a machine gun, it's just a rifle. And it does have the little swivel bit back here to plug into the form. It does have a standard handle. It has the pivoting handle. Little gray drum inside there and then it's gonna be hard to see but there's a purple camera there and I'm trying to recall I believe I put the sticker on there I could be wrong um because I know yeah I did so like this camera here this is an extended camera for that and then even for that one I put those on there um, just using some of the excess purple uh, sticker on the sheet. So if you want to, you can combine these into the long rifle, which makes sense. Go ahead and pull the handle out and flip it sideways. And then you just insert the barrel there. So it literally just fires out from there, which is kind of funny. They're like, hey, let's make it longer. How do we do that? Just make the barrel longer and add more power. 
and then you need a new scope for that so you get this guy and you just insert this right there i believe that's good enough yep and so there we go there we have the full-on gn long rifle which is their basic kind of stuff a lot of them used them we've seen them before stuff like that so let's put it in his hand And because all of the Gundams and mobile suits are right-handed in this universe for the most part, you just take it here. Uh, you're going to just shoot for the slot right there. Try to clear the big spiky fingers, which is the hard part, if we're honest. Try to just peg it in. I don't know if it's going to peg in that well. And then just go ahead and insert that into the forearm. That's how it's powered, which is always cool. Which, in theory, means that a Gundam could potentially pick one of these up and just use it. Or at least any of them that use the forearm power system, which is, well, let's just be honest, most of them. And set that back. And we'll look at his next accessory. I'm not going to do the downturn thing. It gets confused. The shield door. Now, this is pretty cool. And hey, the funny part is, like, okay, fine. This is the thing. I do think it has a tiny bit of GN field that can come out of it, but it does actually push out. And the basic, like, spinner shield that the flags and stuff had from the early days is still a thing it can do, which is kind of funny. Um, I'm sure we probably saw it maybe in at least one scene. But it is interesting to think that they kept that technology despite the fact that they could probably create a decent GN field for protection. Now, the main problem I have with this is the way it attaches, which is just this little guy right here. And it just inserts there into that slot. And you can see already the feet are giving out on me. So you just want to insert that and then just tilt the arm a little bit. Okay, yeah, that toe is... They should have limited the toe coming up, because that really does cause problems. Um, the other thing that really causes problems, that takes very little effort to knock off. There's not a lot holding that in. Now, I know that's how it technically does go on there, because even the HG goes on that way. But it is not a snug fit. There's not a lot holding that on. That is a tiny tab going on in an angle in an area that needs to move and be moved around. So to me, that is a little, a little bit short-sighted. Like, you know, I, I would almost add a magnet and make life easy. I'm not going to, but I said, you know, I almost would. Somebody should. Maybe you. You should do that. Whoever you are listening to this or watching this right now, more than likely listening because you're doing something else, you should do that. Okay, so let's look at the beam saber, which is right here. Seriously, like the way that's hidden. Anybody else think that looks like a bird skull? You know, look at, does that not look like a bird skull? Okay, so very basic beam saber, and of course, it comes with blades. Sorry, once again, nose is running. Just had my morning coffee. And you can, of course, just kind of finagle that around there. Try to get that lined up. I am not a fan of these type of hands. I wish all of them came with the slot and peg style where the weapon slots into the hand and the hand slots into the weapon. Those are the best type of weapon holding hands, and they don't utilize them enough. Now, I know this is an older kit. It's from 2010, but come on. Come on. I mean, I think they might have had that technology already, and they just don't do it. So, there we go. And, yeah, his gun is a little bit heavy, so that's definitely going to be an issue. <laughs> But time for comparisons, if I can. And we'll bring out the MG we did this year with it. The Kyrgios who now doesn't want to stand. There we go. So you can see they were on par size-wise with the Gundams. And Kyrgios is, you know, one of the taller ones. So he's probably going to 
you know, be pretty tall compared to Dynamis. Unfortunately, I can't get the Dynamis out right now, just through the way things have worked. <laughs> so, let's get Curios out. And for comparison to the HG. Now, this is where I'm going to talk about why I think the HG is tech uh, technically superior. Things that are annoying on this and just very fiddly. The crotch pit, the extra hinges here and the way that attaches. That's not a problem here. These are just pegs, not ball joints. So they're just meant to swivel. They're not meant to turn and do all the other things. This is essentially the same here. So these kind of get the same treatment. So that's not really a problem. And I mentioned it, but the shields on the HG stay on better. And the funny thing is that is not that much different or not that different in size of the shield peg. So in my opinion, these bits make more sense. Sure. If you left the ability to fold down and stuff like that to get to the cockpit, I understand that. But I think that these are superior. The way the shield stays on is superior. A major factor the toes, the base of the feet, don't come up. Now, mind you, these are solid feet, so that is part of the reason for that. But I would definitely, definitely limit the range of those toes so it doesn't want to flip up. Here, the ankle moves, but you also have... Okay, so that, that's definitely not a good thing. So the ankles can tilt, but not the toes and not the tips of the feet. So, to me, that makes way more sense to do. Um, obviously, HG can't hold a candle to the details and stuff like that. That's not what I'm comparing to. I'm comparing functionality. And in those aspects, the HG, I almost never will ever have to worry about that falling over on its own. I was giving it a second because that's usually where something will do that. <laughs> The color separation and actual colors of the MG, definitely better. The coolness of having the hidden beam savers, which I'm fairly certain that doesn't have at all. Also, just adding in small details, stuff like that, totally, totally different. So, this thing looks cool, has some functionality issues just due to being too finicky. And that's my main criticism of it. I like it. It's just kind of annoying. And I think that's something that the later iterations with like the Jinx 3 and stuff like that will fix. Now, the Jinx Advanced we looked at before is almost exactly this, but with more stuff slapped on it. You know, the uh, shoulder shields or whatever the heck they technically were, uh, bigger head fins, stuff like that. Those are all those are all just minor upgrades to this. And then the uh, different thigh plates and stuff like that. But overall, like, it was a fun build. I like it. It just is finicky. These ball joints are stupid, like pegs. Pegs would have been better. The hinges here, fine. But, you know, devise a better way. The feet that allow it to just completely fall the hell over whenever it feels like it, that is a terrible plan. It's a terrible plan, Bandai. Go back in time and fix that. Um, the hands, well, you're just going to have to deal with it. They are what they are. I got the beam savers crooked. So, <laughs> but guys, that's going to be it for this Masquerade Monday. Make sure you go back and rewatch the previous year, uh, or previous episode with Curios. And of course, if you haven't seen previous ones at all, go check those out. And of course, go look at the advanced jinx from a little while ago. I know at least one person has said this review doesn't count because you didn't build it. But guys, if I have the person who built it sitting next to me to answer questions about it, that counts. 100%. Also, I can review anything I want. So, shh. Shh. So, but I'll catch you guys next time. Oh, merch and all this stuff down below. I keep forgetting to mention the merch. Merch down there. Go buy stuff. So, and I'll see you guys later. Remember, as always, keep on building. <laughs>